Okay, so we got Windows 2012 server, the base system, version one in our snapshot, set up, patched up, and has been sys prepped and shut down. Now at this point, it's gonna be real simple. All we gotta do is create a couple link clones or a few, depending on how many and what type of servers we wanna do. So for example, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and set up a link clone. So what we're gonna do is right click this base system. We're gonna go to clone. We're gonna go ahead and call it something. Let's call it, uh, let's just call it what it's gonna be. How about um, DC1? And we are gonna reinitialize the MAC address of all network cards. Uh, we don't want it to have the same MAC address as any other server that we're gonna be setting up. So we'll go ahead and check that. Gonna hit next. We wanna do a linked clone, so select link clone. Hit clone. All right, so now we're just gonna go into settings of this link clone. We're gonna go into system and the boot order. We're gonna go ahead and just um, select the hard disk. And uh, network, we're still on internal, so everything should be good. Let's just go ahead and hit okay. We can go ahead and start it up now. You can see it's setting up our devices. Okay. Yes, we've read the terms. We accept. That's correct region and all that. Password, we're gonna go ahead and just set up a password here for our administrator account. If I can match the passwords. And it's done. All right, it's got the correct time. Um, let's go ahead and see here, we log in. The one thing I wanna do here is I wanna change the IP address to be a static IP address and um, because all my servers, I've, I've repeated this many times, but uh, I set them all static. I don't do DHCP reservations or anything like that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is go back over here, right click this, we go to properties and typically the way I do my home setups here is my first server, like my main domain controller, I just make it a dot 10. So 192.168.1.10. Default subnet will work. 192.168.1.1, which is our PFSense's LAN um, network. And our preferred DNS for right now is still going to be just 10.2.0.1. Once we set up the domain controller and DNS services, um, this is going to switch to point to itself. So, oops. Go ahead and hit OK. Hit OK. Our network should come alive. Yep. And to verify, let's just be. Oops, if I can spell that right. Ah. Going through VirtualBox on a Mac keyboard is uh, just a little different. All right, there we go. Let's see. Since this was so easy and quick, let's minimize this. Let's set up another link clone. So I'm just gonna right click that, clone, reinitialize. Let's call this uh, DC2 because I want a couple DCs for fault tolerance, redundancy. Go into settings. We're gonna go to system, turn on the hard disk, hit okay, power it up. And I'll show you too, Let's get into the file system while that's booting up. Let's go to where all these are stored, the S drive, VM storage. Now you can see, all right, so our base system, if we go into the base system, this will be our big one. This is about 15.7 gigs. All right, that VDI. But all our link clones, DC1, uh, your snapshots, 619 megs. Sweet. And if we go to DC2, of course, it's probably going to be pretty similar to that once it's done being installed. So you can see it's going to save us a lot of, a lot of storage. Let's go back here. Let's finish off this install. Next, password. Is it just the local administrator, of course, because we haven't set up a domain? Let's go ahead and log in. And you can tweak 
the settings on each VM, you know, just like you normally would um, to give one of these more RAM if you needed to, depending on what kind of roles are installed and what it's doing. Um, so we'll minimize that. And of course, you want to, don't forget, you want to probably change your IP address, switch it to static, and also the computer name. I just haven't done that here in this video, but um, you already seen that. So we, let's just set up one more for fun, huh? Clone, reinitialize, let's call this uh, WDS, uh, Windows Deployment Services. We're gonna split off all our roles here. I don't wanna bundle a bunch of roles onto our DCs, it's not the best practices. Um, let's go into settings, let's go um, system, hard disk, okay, start it up. Same thing, we read the terms, correct region, type a local admin password, and let's log in. Now, so in our next video, I think what I'm going to do is show you how to enable remote desktop and then port forward all this stuff through PFSense. And also, if you really wanted to be crazy about it, which I did on mine, is um, forward your home router as well. Um, and you can forward ports to all these different, all the different servers just using a different port and be able to access them from outside uh, just as you would um, in another network. It's just going to be port forwarding on your home router and then port forwarding that to the PFSense box. Um, and then from there, you're going to be port forwarding from PFSense to your, your VMs. But uh, yeah, so that's it. I mean, it's pretty simple to create all these, v um, you know, these VMs here. And um, it's not going to use a whole lot of space. So it's just using the base system for all its main base part of it. I don't know how else to explain it really. Um, so the question is going to be how well it's going to work after we shut these down, install Windows updates to the 2012 base system here, um, create another snapshot, and then power these on and see how things run. Um, we'll see. It should work fine, but I'm assuming at this point. So if not, we'll figure it out. All right, guys. Thanks. Later. Bye.